With all you've learned so far, it's easy to see how brain training can work in theory by helping you to create stronger connections throughout your brain and create new connections entirely, thereby learning new skills and improving those you have. This has given rise to a lot of brain training programs and sites that teach you to do things like performing maths tests or memory challenges. And the more you do this, in theory, the more you'll strengthen those skills and the better your memory, attention or mental arithmetic will become. Which sounds like a seal of approval. Should you go ahead and start using that kind of brain training? I argue no. While something like Luminosity or Nintendo Brain Age might be useful for challenging your recall or your spatial awareness, the reality is that they're far too specific to be all that useful in the real world. When you train yourself to become better at spotting the number of cute penguins in a group, and this is the kind of setup these fun brain trainings often introduce, you become better at doing precisely that. You're strengthening neural connections around penguins. You're repeating that game over and over and becoming better at that game. But this isn't going to do much for your ability to think of answers in an interview. It's not transferable to the real world, and for that reason, it's not going to be much use. You know what is a good way to train yourself and become better at interviews, though? Simple. Expose yourself to more interviews. This will put you in the specific set of circumstances you need to enhance that skill, and it will ensure that you're using precisely the correct neural pathways. But that's not to say that all brain training is a waste of time. The very best form of brain training there is, is simply to challenge yourself to perform numerous different cognitive tasks and to continuously expose yourself to novel situations and challenges. In other words, you need to consistently try new things, consistently test yourself and force your brain to keep on growing. The more you exercise your brain plasticity, the easier this will be. The more dopamine, nor epinephrine, brain-derived nootropic factors, etc. you'll produce. It's only when we stop learning new things and stop challenging yourself that your brain becomes incredibly unplastic and you begin to lose abilities. Because brain plasticity can work both ways, a form of pruning does occur when you go for a long time without using a specific neural pathway, and that's why we are inclined to forget things over time. What's more is that the brain will eventually stop producing neurotransmitters that enhance neuroplasticity. Brain-derived neurotropic factor, otherwise known as BDNF, and dopamine are directly related to myelination and neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells. But if you never use them, they will occur less regularly. A happy brain and a healthy brain is a brain that you're using in lots of unique ways. Think about what an amazing learner you are as a baby. Why is that? Well, Partly, this is due to the fact that everything around you is novel. The world is filled with things you don't understand and the brain is flooded with neurochemicals in order to start making sense of it all. As you get older, more connections are created and you understand the world more. However, you'll still continue learning lots of new things and experiencing lots of new things. As you go to school and college. As you move home. As you go through puberty when you learn to drive, when you try out new hobbies. But then you reach adulthood. You find a happy relationship, you fall into a job you like, and your life finds a rhythm. You do that same job day in, day out for the next 50 years. And the older you get, the fewer new experiences you expose yourself to. You stick with the same friends, you stick with the same hobbies, and your brain stops growing. And this can eventually lead to danger as you become more likely to experience age-related cognitive decline or brain disorders like Alzheimer's or dementia. If nothing else, you become more forgetful, more set in your ways and less able to learn new skills. This is one reason fluid intelligence, as opposed to knowledge, deteriorates as we get older. But it doesn't have to be that way. Not if you understand how important it is to keep exposing yourself to new things and to keep learning. Keep learning new languages. Learn new games. Meet new people. Explore new places. 
Just being in a novel environment will cause a flood of neurotransmitters associated with attention and awareness to fire. Take different routes to home from work, go for a jog and explore. And use your body. Learning with the body is really what the brain is designed for, as we've seen. So this is an incredibly important way to keep challenging yourself and to keep learning. Choose activities that will teach your brain useful skills as well. If you want to get more from your brain, then why not learn other languages so that you have more ways to process information? Why not teach yourself to become better at maths or learn programming? Because here's the irony. Things like this will actually prove to be much more useful in the real world than having a slightly better memory anyway. What might surprise you is just how effective computer games can be with all this when it comes to improving your brain power. Once upon a time, we thought that computer games were bad for children, that they would melt their brains and make them violent or something. The reality, however, couldn't be more different. Computer games have now been shown in studies to improve decision-making under stress. Playing action shooters enables us to make better decisions in less time than people who don't play computer games. At the same time, they actually improve visual accuracy. They make us more efficient at spotting differences in colour and at noticing things on the horizon, which of course is a result of looking out for targets. Computer games can even improve your odds of lucid dreaming. This is a type of dreaming where you know you're asleep and gain the ability to control your movements and the contents of the dream. But that's not where the real strength of computer game lies. Rather, computer games offer a very novel kind of brain training because each game is different. Each game uses different controls, which teaches us different motor skills, and each game introduces us to new 3D environments. Sometimes even the physics will change. Each time you pick up a new game, you're forced to learn the new controls and the new rules. You have to start finding your way around a new environment, and you have to change the way you think. This all takes plasticity, as new neural networks are made in your motor cortex as well as in your prefrontal cortex. Each time you learn a new game, it's like learning a new skill, and you have the exact same releases of dopamine, more so in effect, when you get it right. In fact, the truth is even more impressive than that. Computer games are addictive because of the release of dopamine. Why is dopamine released when we play games? Well, because we're learning. The brain loves learning, and if you can make it fun, suddenly you'll start becoming better at everything. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.